Hi, I'm Jason, a product and training specialist here at Condux. Congratulations on your purchase of the Blue Ox Cable Puller. We've channeled years of field research and user feedback into creating what we think is the absolute best cable puller on the market. With its 8,500 pound line pull, hydraulically controlled outriggers and adjustable boom arm, and advanced user-friendly controls, the Ox is ready to take on your toughest installation challenges. So let's walk through some tips and procedures for pulling cable with your new Blue Ox. Here at Condux, we have multiple pullers in our lineup. However, the Blue Ox stands out, not just in our lineup, but in rewriting the standard for underground pullers in our market. All right, so let me take a minute and walk around this machine. The first thing I want to point out is our outriggers. Now, our outriggers are unique in the industry. Nobody else does this. Um, the outriggers actually move away from the Blue Ox to the ground. And what that does is when the outriggers are out, it allows us to use the boom arm free of any kind of support bracing on the end of the boom arm. And it also allows us to be free of having to hook up to any truck or tractor on the other end. We've reinforced this boom arm, added a, a heavy duty cylinder that drops and raises automatically or under remote control. And what it does is it'll drop into place um, and it does not need any kind of support on it. The beautiful part about this boom arm though is not the fact that it doesn't need to be supported but rather that it can pull from any angle that you set this up. Whether you want to pull at this angle, if you want to pull horizontally, you can do that. Um, if you want to move the boom arm to the left or to the right, you can pull from any angle you want with this boom arm. It's not limited to A-frames or any kind of reinforcement in order for it to work. The next thing we did was we looked at our take-up reel design. And we decided we needed to put that take-up reel higher um, this allowed us to widen the take-up reel out and to put more rope on it. The Blue Ox comes standard with 3,000 feet of rope, and it does have 8,500 pounds of pulling ability. Another thing we added was the Tier 4 Final Kohler engine. We added the 49 horsepower to make sure that when you're on your job site, you have all the horsepower you need for any challenges that come up. The front end of the Blue Ox features a job box for any tools or accessories that you may need to bring with you on the site, as well as a heavy duty front jack, which again supports the Blue Ox and is a key component to allowing you to drive any truck or tractor that you may normally need hooked up to this machine. Finally, our control box. We added a, a remote control uh, radiomatic controller to our system this year. And we also added a full color screen that'll allow you to see exactly what's going on in the pull in real time, uh, from pounds of pressure to your line tension to how far you've paid in or paid out on the machine. It also features the ability to download any pull data you may have, put it on a flash drive and download it onto your computer so you can keep that information if you need it. So let's talk safety for a second. One thing we really want you to do is make sure that you read the manual before you operate the machine and watch the videos. This will help you operate the machine better and safer. Also, when you're on a job site, always remember to wear your hard hat, your glasses, your gloves, and your work boots. And make sure not to wear any loose clothing that could get caught in the, either the cable or in the machinery itself. Make sure that you're always aware of your surroundings. Be communicating with the people you're working with and always remember to stay safe on the job site. Before you take the Blue Ox anywhere, there's some things that you wanna do. First, you wanna make sure that your machine is properly hooked up to your hitch, that your jack is fully retracted, and that your safety chains are hooked onto the truck and that your emergency brake cable is also hooked onto the hitch. So there's eight travel pins that need to be accounted for on the backside. First, you have your horizontal locking pin, which goes back here. And basically, all that does is it ensures the outrigger isn't swiveling left to right um, as you're going down the road. We also have your vertical pin here, and that stabilizes the outrigger from dropping to the ground if something should let loose. And we always just wanna make sure of that. We also have two travel pins for our, our, uh, our boom arm. 
Uh, first, this is the, the one that you're gonna use in normal everyday use, pulling behind a truck, that sort of a thing. This one is used in the event that you need to take your, your blue ox cross country and wanna ship it by semi-truck. It just allows the, the uh, boom arm to sit a little bit lower in the semi-trailer. You have the repeating spots on this side over here, and then as well as here. And then finally you have on both of the feet, you also have a locking pin that flips over and locks the foot into a travel position this way. Again, just ensuring that the foot doesn't flop back and forth while you're driving down the road. And don't forget, every travel pin has a sleeve to go with it. So when you're on the job site, you can take those pins and drop them in the sleeves so you don't lose them. And always, always, always make sure to account for all your travel pins before starting your pull. You wanna make sure that those are removed before lowering the jacks, before moving them left to right, and definitely before lowering the boom arm. One of the things we're really excited about is our control panel. And let's take you through that before we start the Blue Ox. Our control panel features a radiomatic controller that has, that has reception from anywhere from 20 yards to 200 yards, depending on if you use the antenna or not. We always wanna make sure that we're staying close to the equipment while it's being used. However, if there's conditions that come up, such as rain or high humidity or something like that, and you feel the reception is dropping, you can put the antenna on the receiver and you'll pick up that reception again. We also feature two emergency stops one hardwired to the controller and also one to the side of the radiomatic controller. In the event of an emergency, you can hit either one of these buttons and it'll shut the engine down and quit the pull. We also have our on-off switch to our, our tier four final engine, as well as a color display. So the features that we've packed into this display are really exciting. It does allow you to, to really keep track of everything that you need, and it'll also allow you to download any of the information that you have onto a flash drive and onto your computer. Start off with, we'll talk about the, the memory page. Now the memory page is simply where we're gonna be able to install a flash drive into this location here, and then we're gonna go to that memory page. When you insert the flash drive into the system, the right to USB will light up. Then all you do is you hit that button and it'll start automatically downloading it onto the flash drive. Once you're done with that, you have two options. You can either delete that log or you can leave it in the system if you like. Either way works. And then when you're done uh, after that, you simply hit the return button, pull your flash drive and you're done. So the next feature we wanna talk about is the record on off, which is the second button down. Now this is actually gonna turn on or turn off that record feature. If we hit the button, We'll see that you have a few options on this end. One, start new pull, continue previous pull, or end pull. By starting a new pull, it's gonna create a new log for that pull. If at any point along the way you need to pause that, you can simply hit continue previous pull and it will restart that current pull. When your pull's done, you wanna make sure to press the end pull button and that finishes it. There's a couple buttons over here that you wanna make sure that you're, uh, you're paying attention to. Um, these are the seconds between samples. So you can select how many seconds between a sample it takes. In other words, when you're paying out or paying in on the machine or, or using the machine, um, this doesn't continually run, but rather takes a series of snapshots uh, as to where how many pounds and how many distance you're at over the course of the pull. The fastest amount of time you can put in there is one second in between snapshots. When the pull's all done, again, if you need to, hit end pull and then you hit your return button, and that brings you back to the main screen. The third button on the box is our system info. And our system info just allows you to see what's going on with the machine in real time. It'll have your, uh, your tension, your engine RPMs, engine hours, uh, your working pressure, change pressure, and real pressure. And that just, again, if you're having any issues or you're not quite sure of what's going on, you can hit that button and it'll give you a good indicator of, of what it's doing. When you're done, you hit the return button, the fourth, the fourth button is our real pressure. One of the cool parts about this machine is that the, the take-up real pressure is self-adjusting, so that you should never have to increase or decrease it by yourself. 
However, there may be some rare occurrences where you need to add a little bit more take-up reel pressure to assist in that pull. You can come to your take-up reel pressure button and you can go reel pressure up or reel pressure down here and that's going to allow you to set that. But generally speaking, you want to leave that alone because the machine is going to adjust properly on its own. The Blue Ox features 8,500 pounds of pull force. However, sometimes on a job site or, or job spec, you may be required to pull less than that either because that's what the job requires or because you know the cable can't handle that much pressure. In which case, we put a feature on here that allows you to limit, limit the pull so that you're never going to over pull the cable. And we use two buttons to address that. First, our limit on off button. You can see here that our limit is off and so naturally set at 8,500 pounds so you can never pull beyond that point. If I hit that button, I now have limit on. If I want to adjust that setting, either higher or lower, all I have to do is go to the set limit button. By hitting the set limit button and using my up down keys, I can increase or decrease that pull tension. Next, we have, our, we have our reset length button, and that's very simple. When you're paying in or paying out, you may need to, to reset that length, or before you start a job, you may want to reset the length, and you can do that by simply hitting this button, and it's gonna zero that length out. Finally, we have the tear button. The tear button is used when you've already got the cable hooked up, but you have line tension, ambient line tension that's sitting there. By hitting the tear button, it zeroes that out and gives you a good indicator of what the actual line tension is as you start your pull. So now that we've gone through our buttons, I wanna just take a second and go through the gauges that we have on our display screen. The F1 is for our suction pressure uh, for our hydraulic system, and F2 is for our return filter. If these lights go off, it means, it means that it's time to change either one of those filters. We also have two indicators that tell us whether the hydraulic fluid is circulating properly. One is our charge and one is our system. If the charge light goes off, it simply means there's something that needs to be inspected with the hydraulic system. If the system light goes off, it means that something needs to be checked either electrically or mechanically with the system. We also have our OR2 and our OR1 lights right here. These are for our outriggers, outrigger one and outrigger two. For safety purposes, when you're operating the Blue Ox, you need to make sure that these outriggers are on the ground. When you put them on the ground, those are indicators that there's at least 500 pounds of pressure on each outrigger. That allows the machine to know that the outriggers are actually down and engaged with the ground. We also have our record on off here, and that's just indicating that you have turned on the recording if you want to record the pulls. We also have some helpful gauges that will allow you to know what's going on with the machine as it's operating. We have our temperature gauge here. We have our fuel gauge. We also have our tension indicator, um, how many feet we've paid out, and how fast we're paying in and out on the machine, as well as our hours and our current PSI on the machine. So as you can see with this control panel, you can see everything you need to see that's going on with the machine and make adjustments as needed during the pull. So now that we've talked about the display screen, let's talk about the remote control. We are really excited about this remote control as it gives you complete freedom on the job site because everything you need to do is integrated into the remote control it allows you to walk around the job site and be aware of what's going on at all times while still being in control of the machine. There are a number of different settings that you're going to want to be fully aware of before you start using the Blue Ox. So on our remote control, we always want to start with the emergency button. In the event of an emergency, you can hit this button and it will shut the machine down completely. After that, we have our upper panel and our lower panel. Our lower panel features four buttons. The first one is our connection button. This will allow the remote control to speak to the receiver, which will ultimately speak to the machine. This is our throttle up and down. This is our mode indicator. And this button currently has no purpose, but may be used in the future if upgrades require it. So now that we've talked about all four buttons on the lower panel, I do want to come back to our mode button. The mode button is very important as it's really going to dictate what the Blue Ox does. And as you can see, we've separated into four different areas our tool circuit, our stability indicator, our arm indicator, and our pull indicator. These are separated on purpose. For the tool circuit, we have an auxiliary tool circuit located right here. And that's gonna allow you to hook up any additional hydraulic machinery that you may need or want on the job site. Our stability button 
controls our outriggers and our front jack. Anytime you need to move the outriggers or the front jack, you're gonna to need to be in that stability mode. The arm mode is gonna be in control of our boom arm. It'll control left, right, extend, up, and down. And finally, our pull mode. That'll control our payout and our pay in of our rope during the pull. So now that we've talked about our lower panel, we wanna talk about the upper panel. The upper panel features four paddles. And depending on the mode that you're set in down below, these paddles are gonna have different, different responsibilities. All of these responsibilities are listed at the top of the paddles. All right, so some of the accessories that come with the remote control are an extra battery, a charger that features an outlet charger for any vehicle that you have. And finally, we include a carrying belt that allows you to take your controller and snap it on your waist, allowing you to free up your hands and reduce fatigue during your pull. So before we start the Blue Ox, we do want to walk around the back and make sure all of our travel pins are put, put away properly. So we can see our travel pins here are in place. We have our travel pin, uh, our travel pin for the boom arm is down in its holder. And now we need to take out this travel pin. And this travel pin. And then we'll come over and start the machine. Now there are a couple steps to starting up the machine and we have them listed here. The first thing we need to do when starting the Blue Ox is to connect the remote to the receiver. We do that by first having our emergency stop engaged. So a good rule of thumb is when you're done with the pull, simply turn the Blue Ox off using your e-stop button and then going back and turning the key off. That way this is already set and ready to go for when you start your next pull. Now that we have the e-stop pressed, we need to turn our key to the on position. Once the key is turned on, now we're gonna lift the emergency stop button and we see this clock come up. When we see that clock, we wanna take our connection button and we wanna press it once quickly and then once again until this light turns green. Once that light turns green, we're connected to the machine. Now that we have our remote connected to our receiver, we can go ahead and start the engine. And once it's started, we need to hit this button one more time. And now we're live. So now that we've gone through our display, we've gone through our controller, we've made sure all of our travel pins are stored properly, We've got our guards in place, now we get to use the Blue Ox, and it's really what separates us from everybody else in the industry. First, we start by lowering the outriggers. Now, with the controller, I can raise and lower the outriggers. Now, the nice thing is that I can use more than one toggle at one time. I can use one singly, or I can use them both together, whatever I wanna do. Okay, so now that I've got the outriggers on the ground, I've applied about 500 pounds of pressure on, on each outrigger which means that I could pull from this position if I wanted to. However, when we're using the Blue Ox, it's always important that as best we can, raise the tires up off the ground as high as we possibly can. Now that I've got the two outriggers on the ground and I have the jack on the ground, I'm gonna raise all three of them at the same time. Now I can raise each individually if I want, but it just makes it a lot smoother if I raise and lower them um, at the same time. So now I've got the blue ox all the way off the ground. And switching to my arm mode, I'm going to lower my boom arm down. And you can see the boom arm is extended here just a little bit. And that's to put some excess tension on the rope. So once I get my boom arm down, I'm gonna retract this, and that loosens up my cable. So it's free to pay in and pay out. I wanna show you how far this extends. By the time the boom arm is fully extended, you should have about 96 inches of complete of, of boom arm to work with. Now, the nice thing is, like I said, it is telescoping and can be used at any setting you want it to be. So you're not restricted by pinning it into place or anything like that. It also can be used at any height. 
I can pull from any angle in this arc if I want to with the boom arm fully extended. Now in and of itself, that gives it a lot of versatility. However, one of the main things that sets this apart is its swing. It has 150 degrees of total swing. And what I'll do is I'm gonna lower my stabilizers. The key to the effectiveness of the Blue Ox is that when we're gonna pull to the side, whatever side it might be, is you can move these outriggers to the side. As long as the boom arm stays inside of the outrigger, it'll be able to effectively pull 8,500 pounds out of the ground from this angle. However, I do want to cover what happens if we do decide to pull from this configuration, where the boom arm is actually over the top or on the outside of the outrigger. Two things can happen. If you swing this over far enough, these two could, the outrigger and the boom arm could collide, causing damage to your cylinders. The second thing is, if you do cross over like this and can pull from this angle, you move all of you move the center of gravity out beyond the blue ox. And once you start pulling, you have the potential to flip the whole machine on its side. So it's imperative that when you're using the machine, the boom arm always stays inside of the outriggers. So again, you come over like this. Stabilizers go down, comes this way. You can pull from this angle. You can pull from this angle. Again, anywhere inside this arc, from any position you want the boom arm to be in, it can do. The only situation that you don't want the outrigger set up in is this one. From this position, if you were to pull directly off the boom arm, this would create a tipping point. So if you're in a scenario where you need to use this position, then you would need a truck or something hooked up to the front. But realistically, the blue ox is versatile enough that this isn't a position that you should ever be in. Because it's got 150 degrees of swing, you can easily reposition the blue ox to get in any corner or that you need to without having to present this scenario. Once you've decided the position you want to be in, then all it is is a matter of paying in and paying out. This is a on-demand pay-in, pay-out system, which means that it must have some tension on the line. Not much, but enough to engage the bull wheels. So for example, if I leave it like this and I pay out, it doesn't go anywhere. I must have tension on the line in order to pay out. We have an extensive line of swivels and grips that are gonna help you to connect your cable to your rope. So now that we've gone through pay in and pay out, the only thing left to do is to put the blue ox back in its travel position. All we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse the steps that we had to set up. So we've already got the rope in place down here. We're gonna extend this out to put some line tension on it so it doesn't come off. Let's flip the stabilizer and we're gonna lower the ox. always make sure to account for all your travel pins. All right, so now we have all of our travel pins back in place. We've got our cable secured to the boom arm. Now all I have to do is hit my e-stop and turn the blue ox off. And that's how you use the blue ox. With the Blue Ox, we wanted to make sure that we kept routine maintenance in mind. For that reason, we added an additional two feet of space here and turned the engine in an orientation that allowed you easy access to your oil filters, your hydraulic fluid filters, and any routine things that you may need to get to. Along with that, we made sure the back panel of our safety cage had quick release tabs on them. By utilizing those, we can take this back panel off quickly. It allows us access to the take-up reel, the bull wheels, and anything inside the puller. It also allows us to access all of the grease points easily from this position. For any other information regarding the type of fluid you should be using, whether hydraulic or oil or any other routine maintenance, make sure to reference your owner's manual.
Well, you've reached the end of this video, but the lesson doesn't end here. As a cable installer, you're in the business of connecting people, and Conducts wants to connect you to the help and resources you need to be successful. At Conducts, we have years of experience developing and deploying cable installation systems all over the world. No matter how unique your installation challenge is, our expert team is committed to helping you out every mile or meter of the way. If you need assistance, you can always reach out to your highly trained local Conducts distributor for help. You'll find more helpful videos and information in our online learning library. Or give us a call right here to speak to a friendly installation expert. Our company is always innovating, but one thing that will never change is our commitment to making sure that your Conduct's equipment continues to serve you effectively for years to come. Now get out there and install some cable. And thank you for making Conduct's a member of your crew.